Hey, you know what's pretty good? You know what? You know what's? You know what's? You know what's pretty good? Anime is pretty good. Some of it, some of the time, a, a lot of it is actually bad, but some of it is good. And free run is uh, good. I've been quite enjoying it. I think we're still in the bit that was released as a two-hour movie because that got that would be the first four episodes that would get cut into, right? Uh, one assumes, which means still extremely high quality animation is gonna be on display, and I'm gonna try and I'm gonna try and restrain myself from going too weird about it. But I've been very much enjoying the vibe of this show so far, like that 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 quiet, somber exploration of mortality and. Like how you deal with grief, like what, like the ways that losing someone can change you. Like it's changed free rent, but it also changed, like, uh, like, it also changed the priest. I keep almost calling him Hitler. That's not, that's not what the name is. It was a him, him, Himmel, something. I can't remember. Uh, ADHD, untreated, bad with names. Gonna have to deal with it. Um, and it's, like the, the the the, it seems to be very thoughtful and understanding about what grief means and, and what it does and how it changes and like the ways in which we carry our lost loved ones forward with us. Um, and that's been really cool. Anyway, this is an anime watch along, uh, combination reaction sort of thing. What that means is that there's a timer in the top left corner of the screen. Right now we're at ten seconds into the episode because I really like this shot in the in the uh, in the opening. Um. And I'm going to set that to zero, and then I'm going to say three, two, one, play. And then we are both going to press play on our videos together. Ba-da! And then we're, then we're going to watch the show uh, together. And then every once in a while, when I have something to say that requires me to pause the video, I'll say three, two, one, pause. And we'll both pause, and I will do my stuff and say my thing. And then I'll say three, two, one, unpause. And then we'll unpause, and then we'll, then we'll keep watching the thing together. And you get this uh, snazzy little screenshot right here that lets you know whenever I unpause, because when I am not unpaused, you get this anime key visual instead. And then when I pause, ta-da, and then I unpause, and then I pause, and then I unpause, and then I pause, and then occasionally the video codec on my video breaks a little bit, which is quite annoying. But that, that's basically the way it works. So, if you are up for watching some anime with an annoying guy sitting on the couch next to you, constantly commenting on stuff, then let's hit that play button. Three, two, one, play. It's an interesting choice of a uh, theme song, by the way. Like this sort of electronica, very modern production thing. I'm not. I'm not so much into electronic genre, so I couldn't tell what genre it is. But like, that's an interesting choice for an opening because normally you might expect something that sort of incorporates classical music or like like. That's sort of, given the mood and the vibe of the show, you might think, oh, it's like a ballad or something quiet and like a, a ballad, maybe. Um, <clears throat> or a waltz or something like that. So it's just like, like, it has this very, very modern opening. With like this really high pace. Um, interesting. I don't know if it's good. Like, I'd be interested to read the translated lyrics. Um, it's a good song though, and like the little choral piece that comes in at the end, and like the super synth '80s city pop, um, wind instruments. Hand animated sails. Fuck you. <laughs> Just she grows up so fast.
<laughs> Free rent, no. Again, that thing about time passing in a flash, right? And that Fern is so grown up and knows her so well and is willing to, like, sass her back and play with her in this way. <laughs> Cute. And this we finally get to see a more silly side of Free Rent besides the mimic gag. The f frame rate on Freerun's walking, the little cheap look left and right kind of thing. She's still too young to go in taverns? <laughs> oh, I love these guys. <laughs> I like those guys. They're fun. That's not very stealthy, Fern. Again, it's little like that. The little touch on the thing with the left hand that she. Woo. No, but seriously, three, two, one, pause. Okay, so like, mm -hmm. <laughs> I know, like we talk a lot of like I I sort of talk a lot about comparisons to, like between, like seasonal anime and like all of the the the, the trade offs, and the, and like the compromises that you make when you make something on a seasonal anime budget, right? Like, but this little thing, that, like the little, the hand on the on the wood frame, like gliding it up and like it sort of glides and it moves a little, ah, goddamn video corruption thing. I don't know why my video codec filters do that, but you know, like, um, first of all, just the high frame rate on, on the walking animation there, but also like the little sliding the hand gently up the frame of the window or the door there and then as she settles down the way that the hand comes back like that's a lot of extra frames of animation to do for a motion that's very incidental and very simple right like a lot of seasonal anime wouldn't bother with that because that's 
why why would you spend your budget there? But when I get to see it, it's like because those little moments when a character is I absent mindedly touching something that they're not really thinking about, I feel those are in terms of animation, those tend to be revealing. Like those tend to be moments that tell you something about who this character is. Like that or at least that gives you a feeling of their physicality, that they are physically present in the world. Um, which is the other thing that can happen in in like when you have anime where a lot of the time the anime is cutting from a talking face to a talking face to a talk like that incidental work, that object work, like that those little incidental things of of characters doing things to adjust to the world that they're in can do so much for a sense of presence and weight and reality rather than these are two talking heads going back and forth, right? And that's not to say that like sometimes you want talking heads going back back and forth. Sometimes that's necessary for the for the tone of the thing. Comedy anime, for example, benefits often a lot from characters being kind of weightless and not really being in touch with the environment that they're in. Um, but it's, it's yeah, just a lot of effort was clearly spent on that little scene of Freeran just walking from the bed to the door frame, and I just appreciate the physicality of that. I just like it. Anyway, we're at six minutes and twelve. Three, two, one. On pause. Also, oh, the building. Oh, fuck me. God damn it. Okay. Three, two, one. Pause. This is just a small thing. I promise I'll be quick. That building, that house, yes. Oh, love that. Because, because, because. Um, background, the, the background design in this two-hour movie is fucking immaculate. Um, but you see how the, like, the back of the house roof sags? You see how the, the beams on the timber there are, like, sort of uneven? Like, like they're not perfectly vertical like you see the the, the roof sacks you see the slight curve on the balcony there you see how the beams aren't perfectly level and straight you see how the windows aren't quite perfectly level with one another <laughs> mm, that is the good sh because that's how ancient like really really old buildings would often be like that um like a lot of the principles of architecture and like like um and and like construction materials and all that like the idea that we have nowadays of buildings being these perfectly regular, very, very, like, here's a lot, here's a bunch of square rooms, and here's a bunch of perfectly level walls and ceilings and floors. Buildings weren't always like that. And I remember, I've lived in a building uh, when I was, when I was a kid that was, like, several hundred years old, um, and which was made, like, which clearly back in the, when it was built, was probably quite level and quite straight, but over like a couple of centuries of the building just being there, um, all the timbers had started to sag and the floors were uneven. Like the first time you, it, when I lived in that apartment, the first time you went in there ever, you'd feel woozy and weird because like, oh, sh like the floor would be subtly not straight. Um, like if, if you put like a marble down on the floor, it would just roll <laughs> in one direction. Um, and and it, like I remember very clearly like the first time that when we moved in, um, that I, I felt kind of weird and it's, oh, it's weird and kind of I almost felt a little bit seasick. Um, like it almost felt a little bit like that um, for a while because the floor was so warped and uneven, not in a way that uh, threatened the structural integrity of the building in any way um, or that made it unlivable, just in the way that, oh, shit, you kind of had to get your sea legs uh, to be there. Um, and like the, the beat, like all the doors would be kind of a little bit bent and crooked, which would make it hard for like to, to get doors to close properly. Um, and it was a preserved building. Like it was a historical building. You weren't allowed to do much to modernize and, and like, and refurbish it. Um, but like buildings like that tend to be like that. They tend to be uneven. They tend to have like, if they've stood for a sufficiently long amount of time, the wood will sag and like the building will deform and things will sort of shrink in on themselves and settle in really interesting ways. And I just... I recognize this kind of building. Like I, because like the, the town where I grew up was like founded in the year 800 or something like that. It was, it's, no, it was 800 years old. So it was like from the 1200s ish. Um, and it's like, there were really, really old buildings there. Um, and they had that vibe, that feeling there. Like that's, the, this is what they felt like to look at. And I'm just, I'm just kind of delighted to see that, <laughs> uh, that, that, the background design takes into account that, especially given that 
when you're like this takes a lot longer to draw than something which you create with just a ruler right like something that is uneven and curved and, and kind of weird like that takes a lot more handcrafted sk uh, not, not skill but handcrafted time to create than a building that you like a modern office building where you just kind of make a box and you put a bunch of squares on it and then there you go boom that's a that's a modern office building with windows on it um so that's i uh, craft I'm, I'm just enjoying the craft anyway three two one on pause I said I'd be quick. I was lying. <laughs> Sour grapes, haha. <laughs> Yeah, it's just the, <laughs> again, just the animation on the box rotating as Fern is holding it is like, craft. Good piece of the character design to the butterfly motif. That's going to come back. Because I remember the butterfly motif. I remember that. <laughs> Killing magic. Okay, tone shift. Ooh, and a little bit of shift in the aesthetic as well. Mm. Just a bit. Not not much, but just a little bit of shift in Okay. In the way that it's doing colors. Like this a lot of the softness kind of went away.
<laughs> oh, very Gohan training with Piccolo. Dodge! Well, that's Team Four Star, but you know. Okay, so now we're introducing combat mechanics, which presumably means that we're about to get into some combat encounters, where Fern can put it into practice. <clears throat> ah, the little bits of her motion. <laughs> Just the posture and the posing. Oh my god, they hand animated the gate bastards. That little shot of passing under the gate, like, oh. The Elder Sage of Corruption. <laughs> that oh the little the consonants between the both of them are looking up in the same way oh gorgeous The little gesture of her holding on to the rim of her coat, of her dress, out of nervousness. Oh, beautiful. Oh, the effects animation.
<laughs> Again, just oh, the fucking character animation. So pretty. Birds might want to get out of there. Anyway, we're about to see some shit go down. Yeah. Oh, is he 3D animated? No. Surely not. But maybe one of the shots was? I don't know. Oh, the physicality on him is good. Oh, this looks so good. <laughs> Ooh, put a hole in him. <laughs> and now she's reading the book. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Come on. 
Come aboard and bring along all your hopes and dreams. The brat with the straw hat. If they'd made the, the straw hat with a red band around it. <laughs> uh, well. Right, so that's the point of the fight, is also to demonstrate to f to to Fern, like, magic history magic matters. Like, knowing the history of how the magic got to be the way it is, is important, and it'll empower you, like, to understand the history of things. Which is, again, good lesson, and, like, it's an interesting... That's also a thing about, like... I quite liked that thing of, like... Yeah, no, 80 years ago, this was cutting-edge magic technology, essentially. And then <clears throat> humans took a real good long look at it and was like, better do something about that. <laughs> and now <laughs> he's not that powerful anymore. Um, that is clever. Like, that's, again, world-building, right? This thing of fights don't just exist in a vacuum, right? Like, that there's this context around them. And it's also interesting that Freerun, like, very casually used his killing magic, right? And that wasn't ever a, oh god, I have to use the dark powers of the enemies, this is the dark side of the force thing. It was just, no, no, this is ordinary offensive magic. Interesting. Cool. And the animation on that dude was real good. <clears throat> because, like, it's, like... The little gestures he was making when he was, like, touching his face and, like, considering things and, like, the sense of physicality there. Oh, very good. Very good. Very good indeed. It's like, yeah. So now we got to see a little bit of, of like, battle Sakuga, I suppose. And I like, I like the, again, the animation on... on Evil Sage Demon didn't catch his name. I caught his name, but I've forgotten it because of ADHD. Um, when he was casting, like, multiple spells at Fern, that his motions were... That he was doing, like... I'm just going to be careful not to play too much footage all at once. Right, like th that the motion that he's doing that he's doing uh here, right? Um like that that circular sort of sweeping motion almost like he's conducting an orchestra or like like he's urging a wave forward. I thought like in terms of of handling his physicality with magic, I thought was very interesting. Like that's a, that's an interesting animation choice in terms of in terms of telling us like how this person relates to their magical power versus like the very the, the very different physicality that that Fern and Freerun have when they do their magic casting. That's cool. Like that's just that's just cool. That's a good way to make like make a character feel distinct and memorable is to give them like a unique physical way in which they enact their power uh good interesting cool oh i could sit here and, and blabber on about that all day of course or i could watch the next episode i could watch the next episode right now i think i'm gonna do that so uh, i'm gonna go do that and record it and in the meantime bye